Thank you for looking at the video for the automated tour of the mitochondrial mini sequence in the mitochondrial world. If you've reached this point, you've either clicked on the link within the NPC for the video, in which case you'd already be at the right place. But if you've accessed this video, either YouTube or our Blackboard learning management system, you'll need to navigate to the position shown on the initial screen there on the video, that's 76481. And when there, access the NPC for the automated tour number one. Within that NPC, You'll see there the link for the mitochondrial mini video, which of course you already have. And then you can see to the bottom right there, the start tour button. Be sure to be ready to either activate that start tour button or hover over it, whichever device you have to start it. But first I'd like to let you know, before we push that button, what will happen when you push it? I'll need to count you in, but when you do actually push that button, it's going to take you to a teleportation sequence through the mitochondrial mini world, which is all automated. So we need to time the pushing of that button so with this audio sequence you're listening to to make sure they're in sync. So get ready. I'm going to count you in from five. You'll hear the word go. That's when you've got to push that button. So get ready. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Now you'll notice with a sign saying turn to the right. So use those controllers to turn to the right. And what you're looking at now is a large representation of the mitochondrial electron transport chain. You can see in Roman numerals the 1, 2, 3 and 4. Green, red, yellow and blue structures. These all represent complexes of the mitochondrial electron transport chain. There's a lot of other stuff going on, and we're going to take a deeper look once we get closer to these structures in a moment. We're going to teleport down under that green structure to see what's going on. But collectively, we'll see some beacons and some lights going off there that will reflect electron flow through these different complexes, going from the green one to the right to the blue one on the left. And again, these are complexes of the mitochondrial electron transport chain. And immediately in front of us, you might see a sign that says IMS. And that is the intermembrane space where we'll be in a moment's time. But there are other locations we'll also get to. Now you should find yourself looking at a large green structure in front where you see four blocks with H's on them coming out of the wall. These are meant to represent four hydrogen ions being pumped by complex one. As the light goes on, this reflects when the electrons arrive at complex one. If you want to turn to your left, you'll notice there, there are a bunch of hydrogen ions, this time with lanterns under them, meant to represent the charge on the hydrogen ions. And this is not possible to simulate through the blocks coming through the wall. But of course, hydrogen ions are pumped into this location. And remember, as you look down this location, you're looking down the intermembrane space. And that is a space between the outer and inner mitochondrial membranes. Take the time to look down also to see those hydrogen blocks accumulating on the ground below you. You might be interested, what are those clear blocks you're seeing, the walls, they're meant to represent the membrane. So the gl clear glass blocks of the membrane. And now you would have noticed that we've been teleported to another location. So if you look up towards the yellow structure where the protons are being pumped or the hydrogen blocks are being pumped, you'll notice now that you've arrived at what should be mitochondrial complex three in yellow. This complex also pumps four hydrogen ions from behind that wall, which is, of course, the matrix, into the one immediately in front of you, which is the intermembrane space. So, in fact, if we turn around 180 degrees just for a moment, you'll see a sign behind you that's barely visible, but it says pH 6.8 in large yellow blocks. And this pH 6.8 represents the pH of the intermembrane space. So if you turn back around and face the structure, the yellow structure pumping the four blocks, we'll get ourselves ready for our teleportation to the next location, which will be in front of this large blue structure, which is meant to represent complex four. Notice that also as the lamps turn on and you see those red stone circuits lighting up, this is meant to reflect electrons arriving. You can see also that this protein complex pumps a different number of hydrogen blocks compared to the other two, but it still pumps them from the mitochondrial matrix out here to the intermembrane space. If you turn towards the right, you'll see an orange structure as well that is not pumping any protons, but that is meant to be cytochrome C that you may be aware of. 
But also while we're looking in that direction, you can get a really good idea of all the hydrogen ions accumulating in this intermembrane space area. If we turn back towards the blue structure, you'll also see to the left of it a large green structure. But notice there are no lamps going on in this structure. And that is because the electrons do not flow any further than the fourth complex. That's that blue structure in front of you. Instead, with this large green structure now that we're teleported closer, this is meant to represent ATP synthase. If you look up at it, what you'll hopefully be able to see is the hydrogen ions represented by the H blocks with the blue lamps going through it from our side, they're actually going through all the way to the other, which is the matrix of the mitochondria. So if we looked right down at all these hydrogen ions accumulating to our right, you can see all the hydrogen ions being pumped into our location, which is the intermembrane space. And if we look back at this large green complex, we can see that this uses the hydrogen ion gradient to go through from our side to the matrix side, again reminding ourselves that those white glass blocks are indeed meant to reflect a membrane. And so we're seeing an accumulation of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space, which lowers the pH to 6.8. In a moment, we're going to teleport to the other end of the electron transport system, which should have happened by now. And if we turn around to the left, maybe, until we face this large green structure, a moment ago, if you look down slightly towards the left, you'll see some hydrogen blocks being pumped. We were down there just a moment ago. If we look up a little bit, you'll see some white rods protruding from the wall. And what they're meant to represent are the phospholipid tails of phospholipids. So right in front of us is that large green structure. And in fact, where you are right now is inside the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. You'll notice this green structure has some lamps on it. We'll come back to those a little bit more, but they're meant to reflect electron flow coming from NADH through this complex one, and then going forward to that purple structure, which we'll teleport to in a moment, which represents coenzyme Q, also called ubiquinone. So this experience is meant to make us think about protons being pumped from the right side of our, our, our viewing area through to the left, and that's from the matrix to the intermembrane space. So now that we've teleported above the pink structure, hopefully if you look down, you'll see the pulses of lights turning on. And these are meant to reflect the electron flow coming from behind us, which is, if you want to turn around, that's the green structure being transferred over to ubiquinone. Notice that ubiquinone itself does not pump any protons from our right side, which is our matrix, to our left. If you're looking at that large red structure, that's meant to be succinate dehydrogenase, which is complex two, which is not featured heavily in this animation and this experience. In a moment, we're going to teleport forward to that yellow structure, reminding ourselves we're inside the inner mitochondrial membrane at the moment. And we can see at times protons being pumped to our left, which is the intermembrane space. So as soon as we teleport, we'll recognize an additional number of features. So now in front of us should be a large blue block, but if we turn left, we'll see an orange structure. And if we turn back a little bit so we can see the, the yellow structure as well as the orange and looking slightly down, you can see lots of different things. You can see the pulses of redstone circuit being turned on, which is meant to reflect electrons flowing from complex three. And that would make that orange structure cytochrome C. Notice it's in a different location to where you are. You're inside the inner mitochondrial membrane, yet that structure is on the other side where you were previously. And that tells us that the cytochrome C is located in the inner membrane space or the intermembrane space. But it does still receive electrons from complex three. But looking over towards the right, you'll see that that electron flow goes from the orange structure into the blue one, and that blue structure represents complex four, or cytochrome C oxidase. Now that we've teleported in front of us, there's a large green structure, but I want us to turn around for a moment, 180 degrees to our right, and recognizing that electron flow coming from the structures further in the distance, the purple, the yellow, perhaps the orange you might be able to see down below us into the blue, and over to the left, you'll notice there's some oxygen atoms and some hydrogens floating around. We'll look at those in more detail later, but recognize below us that the electron flow does not go past that complex. 
And indeed, if we turn back around and look at the green structure, the dark green structure that represents ATP synthase, you'll notice there is absolutely no electrons flowing from complex four to this last complex. And that is because you can see those hydrogen ions going across from our left to our right, they are used to power ATP synthase. And for, to our left, those hydrogen ions are coming from the intermembrane space, going through this complex over to our right, back into the matrix. Now that we're inside the matrix, we can turn hopefully to our left and we should hopefully be able to see that large green structure and maybe our resident alpaca. You'll notice if we look up a series of lamps going off in sequence and the words or letters E flow. And what that is supposed to represent is electrons flowing from our left to our right in a specific order from the green structure, which is complex one over to our right. If we look a little bit towards our left a bit more, you'll see some floating blocks that are green with lanterns under them that don't have a H on them. And these are representing NADH dehydrogenase. And we'll come back and look at those in more detail later. But these are supplying the electrons for NADH dehydrogenase. And if we look over following the E flow sign all the way down to where those lamps stop, you'll see they flow all the way to that blue structure. When we're looking towards the right, you'll also see that sign saying matrix pH 7.8. And this tells us the pH inside the matrix is actually lower, 7.8. But if we turn and look back at the blue structure towards our left and look down, you'll actually see four beacons lighting up. And what these four beacons are meant to represent are the four electrons arriving that are needed for this complex to convert oxygen one molecule of O2 into two molecules of H2O. So notice how the electrons don't flow any further. So oxygen is the terminal or last electron acceptor at the end of that large electron transport system. And recognize too that this complex needs some hydrogen ions, oxygen to make that water. So in fact, each one of those four electrons, if you look down a little bit, goes into making each of the four bonds needed within the two molecules of H2O. So H2O times two has four bonds within it. In a moment, we're gonna teleport down to ATP synthase, which is that green structure to our right. And we're gonna look back up and look and observe ATP being made. So if you look, you should maybe need to turn slightly to your left and look up. You'll see a massive burst of yellow sparkles there, which are meant to be the fireworks representing ATP being made. Notice that those hydrogen blocks now are flowing towards you but we are standing in the mitochondrial matrix. So those blocks are coming from the other side of that membrane, which was the intermembrane space through the complex. If you look slightly left and you can see the lamps going off on complex four, notice how the lamps going off have nothing to do with the amount of ATP being made. And that is because the electron flow is not directly coupled with ATP synthesis. This complex uses the hydrogen ion gradient from the intermembrane space. And notice how rapidly it can use that hydrogen ion concentration to make ATP, which is again those big bursts of yellow fireworks going off. So again, we're looking around, we can see to our right if you wish. Um, we've teleported ourselves to the start of the electron transport system. If we look further right, we can see where we were a moment ago. But now hopefully you can recognize that electrons are flowing from NADH. You can see these rectangular blocks with a symbol and sign on NADH with two lanterns under them representing the two electrons carried by NADH. You may also notice NAD plus as well and notice how these don't have any lanterns. This is meant to reflect the fact that that is the oxidized form of this electron carrier that is not carrying those two electrons. Instead NADH passes, if you look slightly left, those two electrons to the NADH dehydrogenase and you can see those series of five to six lamps being activated within that green structure going diagonally downwards. This represents electrons being passed from NADH through to the uh, NADH dehydrogenase. So in a moment, we're gonna go down and look at some of these electron carriers, which you may have never heard about. These are different forms. And if we turn slightly to our left, you should see some blocks that look a bit like Fe and S, which represents iron sulfur clusters. Now, whilst you may not be familiar with these, this is something that's explored a bit more in the unit cell form and function. These are referred to as iron sulfur clusters. And in fact, those little orange blocks are meant to represent the bonds holding the cluster together. And these are some of the electron carriers that occur within the complexes. So if you look slightly upwards a bit and to the right, you'll see the word heme. 
Notice how heme is written more towards the yellow and the blue structures, and this represents the fact that heme is an electron carrier that's only in those last cytochromes of the electron transport chain, whereas the iron sulfur cluster is represented more in the early stages of the electron transport chain, which is that green structure and also that red structure above called succinate dehydrogenase. So keep in mind this iron sulfur cluster, you don't need to know the exact structure, but in a moment when we teleport back up to the left, we're going to turn slightly to our right to look at the NADH structure. Again, recognize that we have a series of lamps going on, on that the pulse travels down towards the left, and those lamps now are meant to represent different iron sulfur clusters. So essentially, electrons flow not just from NADH into the protein complex, but it travels through a series of internal electron carriers all the way through this complex and then onto ubiquinone. So each one of these different types of electron carriers will have its own internal electron carrier system. And so in a moment too, we may teleport slightly more to our right to have a, a sorry, to our left to have a slightly better view of this whole system. And then we'll eventually teleport out and end the experience. But for the moment, take the time to look at NADH and the electron flow. Think about the iron sulfur clusters and where you are. You're standing at the moment inside the matrix of the mitochondrion. And now you'll find yourself teleported back to the start of the sequence where you initiated the automated tour one. If you want to take a different tour, look at the NPCs nearby and start those automated tours. But please also be aware that if you're interested in taking a virtual reality version of this tour one and the other tours, if they're available, just let Gabe know, that's the curator of this world, and we'll see what options are available at that time. Thanks. Bye.